Boy, oh boy, has accountability evaporated. Eh? They feel the need to be spoiled. There's so much psychological warfare you can deal with. Weak people get taken advantage of. Crazy how shit like this happens. This old G right here. <laughs> yeah. Hi everyone, Paul Elam here with an ear for men. First, since I anticipate the anti-generalization police will show up pretty quickly on this one, a couple of disclaimers. I understand and fully acknowledge that there are men who react to everything in life with emotions over intellect, who would not know how to take responsibility for their G. actions if their life depended on it. I've even worked with some men's advocates just like that. Similarly, I have known women with minds of titanium, staunch realist with zero tolerance for anyone, including other women, who demonstrate a lack of agency or who won't, simply put, own their shit. Okay there, I said it. Not all women are like that. Not all men are like that either. With that, I feel free to move on and discuss the women that most men have to deal with in life. The ones that are like that. Let's call on Jack Nicholson for an example. I can't resist. You usually move through here so quickly, and I just have so many questions I want to ask you. You have no idea what your work means to me. What does it mean to you? Then somebody out there knows what it's like to be in here. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Oh, God, this is like a nightmare. <laughs> oh, come on, just a couple of questions. How hard is that? No. How do you write women so well? Infamous line. I think of a man, and I take away reason and accountability. <laughs> that scene was intended to be funny, and it certainly is. But as we know, a lot of the best humor is rooted in some very painful reality. It is a reality that most men are familiar with, even those who live their lives denying that it really matters to them. That is the topic of today's talk. The implications of reason, or a lack of it, is worthy of another separate video. So for today, I'm going to stick with a frustration that I wager few men have managed to avoid. Lack of accountability in women. That accountability in the relationship sense is a very big deal. When did you put this video out, Paul? You put this out six years ago. Boy, oh boy, has accountability evaporated, eh? It doesn't matter as much when it comes to casual sex or with women in whom you have no emotional investment. Committed relationships are quite different. Accountability is the only real way a person can demonstrate proof that they actually care about someone else. And a lack of accountability is proof that whatever level of caring or love a person professes is questionable. How can it be otherwise if that love and caring always take a backseat to ego, immaturity, and control? It's been said, and I think rightly so, that the three most important words in any relationship are not, I love you, or I forgive you, but I am sorry. That moment when someone drops their pretense, their defenses, and offers a sincere apology isn't just offering words. It's an- Women in apologies, eh? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> action that says you matter. Certainly that you matter more than avoiding responsibility for whatever Nothing mistake they hate than being wrong. Oh, and by the way, a demonstrated lack of accountability is also something else. It is a bombastic, neon glowing message. Oh, hold on. We're getting a little stream warning here. Guys, look, 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 look at this. We detected copyright audio and video. Paul, are you? Did you copyright this? You're a G. Let's wait a second. I've covered his stuff before. There's no way. That had to be the moon video. Let's give it a shot. If stream dies, it dies, boys. We've been got. Message ...that she will repeat whatever she did. If she has nothing for which to oh, apologize... Ah, the movie. Ah, oh, you're right. You're right. It's the movie. Jesus, dude. Hollywood. Get off the f scrounging for every penny. Then she has wow. no reason not to do it again. Dude, a 10-second scene. They're on your ass. Immediately. Did you see that? The street? I got a warning on the back end here. Immediately, boys. If, for instance, she humiliates you in front of friends or family and then rolls her eyes when you object to it, it is the same thing as looking at you in the eye and saying life with me. Swear, I think I'm going to start streaming either on Twitch or on Rumble some of these episodes that have some of this shit on there because Hollywood is a joke. YouTube's a joke, dude. Me will be an unending string of humiliations, and I could care less how that makes you feel. The willingness to take a higher, more functional, more moral road than that 
is noticeably lacking in modern women. That is why the scene with Jack Nicholson resonated with so many people. In a community like the men's movement, where men and women are more willing to openly discuss the shortcomings of both sexes, that scene is a classic. In the years I've spent working with men, I've made an interesting anecdotal discovery. Very few, if any men, made the unsolicited disclosure that they were frustrated with a lack of accountability in their own. Yeah, I'm going to look into this in the next few days, boys. I'm going to see how to simultaneously cast on Rumble as well if you guys want to join on there. By the way, thank you. Side note, everybody who's uh, super chatting and everybody who's a supporter on Locals, that helps tremendously. Romantic partners. This held true in individual and couples work. If not asked, men usually said nothing about it. However, when the subject was pressed, almost all of them were quick to agree that it was a given that she was never wrong about anything, or at least that she would never admit to it. Now, this is a pretty damned important item, given that so many men in couples counseling are there because she's convinced he is wrong about everything and she wants the therapist to collude with her to fix him. I can't tell you how many women I've seen who figured out couples counseling was a bad idea at the same exact moment that they figured out that they were going to be called out on some of the relationship problems. And it is indeed a rough path for a couple to take because there's a clear connection between her lack of accountability and him being blamed for everything that has gone wrong. In the majority of cases I've worked with, the man was prone to... Yeah, and this is unfortunately... The main archetype psychologically of women today is the princess syndrome and that they feel the need to be spoiled in society and their simpy father told them that they're princess and deserve everything in the world to be saved and that, that they're not responsible and have accountability for nothing. It's the man's job. Unfortunately, if you get one, one of these like high maintenance princessy types, you're f done for. Yeah, they, f they essentially expect you to weigh on them hand and foot and when shit goes wrong, it's your fault which it might be, might not, doesn't matter, but you're going to go to therapy being blamed. And I've heard for plenty of men, you get ganged up in therapy quite often. So good luck. And most of the time, from what I've heard, guys are paying up the ass to go to couples counseling and therapy, marriage therapy, and it doesn't even work in the end. So you got finessed by a therapist. They didn't fix your shit and you still lose all your shit. Great. Because you chose a woman that had the princess complex. Instead of finding one with, again, I tell you guys, self-awareness. Not only was daddy present, but active in her life. Tom girls usually do the best. Girls that worked with their hands, that played in the dirt, went fishing with daddy. Those girls are typically the most like down to earth, chillest, and have a good grasp on what a man provides, what a man's value is, and how he's supposed to be in the first place. Most women today don't even have, like most women today either have a father with no spine or no father in the house at all present. So they have no basis for how a man should act anyways in a relationship or what a man constitutes. So they end up picking bad boys that they mistake the aggression and the acting out is a man when it's really a boy trapped in that body that's cr that's crying for attention. So they pick the wrong guys, essentially. They have no like barometer on what makes a man a man. And you end up with a bunch of broken chicks now because they've never had a daddy present to teach them otherwise. And then they take it out on men. And then you get to fast forward 30. I want to settle in with something different now. I have accepted this state as normal. I have even met many men who were actively resistant to the idea that everything isn't their fault. They seemed afraid of the idea that she would have to own her shit in order for things to get better. I think that happens because it is far less painful for some men than accepting they aren't important enough to her to own her part in things. Add to that their history of being made to suffer anytime her mistakes are revealed. Oh, yeah. First of all, you don't want to call your wife out because she's either going to give you the dead bedroom treatment. You're going to be sleeping in the damn couch. You're going to get the cold shoulder. It's going to be walking like a stranger. She's going to guilt you. And uh, what is it? She's going to be passive aggressive when she, for example, normally she's happy making your food. She'll passively aggressively make you some shitty food. Dude, there's so much psychological warfare you can deal with as a man trapped in a marriage with no way out because you can't afford to lose half your shit. So you have to deal with some toxic person. You're a f dude. I've heard. Yeah, I used to bartend in college, guys. I've heard all the f stories. I had regulars that would come get absolutely blackout wasted day after day. Stories of them losing everything and all the trappings of marriage. I got red pilled in multiple directions.
by women and older men. Field, and you have plenty of reason for unhealthy resistance. It will help many men to know this and to know what to do about it, especially as so many of them lack the skill to do anything at all. <laughs> I'm going to offer my take on that too. <laughs> to start with, what I won't do is turn this into some biological determinist claptrap about how women are inherently evil. Yeah, that's a cope. Women are just living their biological imperative, period. And weak men allowed them all the rope in the world to, can't say that word, unalive themselves with. <laughs> but essentially, when you have no, sp uh, no spine, when you don't stand up for yourself, when you have no boundaries as a man, it's in a woman's nature to take you for everything you have. You don't value yourself. Why should she? That's all it is. That is, quote, a biological imperative. Weak people get taken advantage of. And when you're a weak man and you're simping, you don't value yourself. You don't You don't know the word no. She's going to keep taking and taking until there's nothing left of you but a husk. It says, Bo, I am 37. I live in the Netherlands and dating is awful. I'm tired of this life and see no purpose without a woman slash kids. I go to gym every day. Earn six figures, but I am tired. Well, son, let me tell you something. Well, you're a grown ass man, 37. Start thinking about taking trips. Save some money. Start traveling the world. It might introduce a spark in your life. Seeing a different culture, a different lifestyle. Something you're not used to in the Netherlands. Dude, weather alone can change people's out outlooks on life. You can go from a gray, damp, cold, ugly looking place like the UK to some tropical island where the sky is absolutely baby blue every time. Picturesque white clouds, waves hitting the sand, and all of a sudden life's, life's amazing. Life's great. Dude, I, I could live here. I could retire here. I could spend the rest of my days here. It's quiet. It's peaceful. All of this makes me happy. It's the fact that most people never get to travel, guys, that's the issue. You've never seen what it's like all over the world. So before you say you're tired, before you say you don't have a purpose, before you say you don't know what the f*** to do with yourself, get your goddamn passport and just go travel and see the world for first. Then you can make the decision of saying, all right, been there, seen it all. Nothing interests me. And nobody, nobody, nobody that's ever traveled ever had that to say, ever. And you're doing good, brother. You're making six figures, six figs. Stop keeping up with the Joneses, save some money, get rid of excess, start traveling. Stupidity and sexism won't help anyone understand, much less overcome this problem. While there may well be biological influences at play, those influences reside in men every bit as much as they do women. If women are to blame for their lack of accountability, then so are men. Men and women have always worked together to socialize girls and boys to grow into the adults we become. Perfect. And men, if we're going to be honest, are the worst culprits at enabling women to be childish. Perfect. White knights and the daddy portion of daddy's little princess there weren't invented on the internet. They are not a product of gender feminism or any other kind of feminism. Just like a lack of accountability in women, they are socialized traits expected and reinforced by the culture around us. Feminism feeds off that, but it did not create it. Mm -hmm. As I said, there is every reason to believe that sociobiology plays a partial role in this, but since blind determinism and pseudoscience won't provide more than speculation about the nature of the problem, we can abandon those things here and move on to the solutions, which are behavioral. If you think I'm going to tell you that you have to train women into responsibility for their actions, nope. then you are 100% correct. Oh. That is exactly what you have to do. I would take it a step further. I think you don't have to do much training when you become that kind of guy and you naturally have your boundary set and your quote frame. We call it frame in the community, but a man with unbreakable frame has very little training to do. It's simply expectations placed on them being in your surroundings, in your vicinity. Now, the weaker you are as a man, the weaker your, say, value in society, the weaker in her eyes you see you seem, the more conditioning, training, whatever the word you want to use, compliance, the more of that you're going to have to dole out. It's funny how when you're that guy and shit's going for you and you're making a ton of money and society and people, your family, your neighborhood, everybody you came up with starts seeing you do really well, man. Watch, you guys, some of you in here are going to be on the way up. That people start to fall in place in your life. That people start to act right. That when women see you coming up and doing well, they all of a sudden know their place. They want to cook for you. They want to clean for you. They want to take care of you, give you massages. 
weird how the talk when you were at the bottom was we're doing 50 50 i'm a bad i get it on my own i don't need no man to all of a sudden sees your value naturally starts to fall in line it's crazy how shit like this happens that's part of the game nobody even talks about either that or you have to live with the fact that you don't matter and more importantly the fact that you never will i know it's a platitude but the fact is if you don't matter to yourself how can she possibly respect you enough to grow up? The good news is that while not easy, it's simple. As with anything else in life, you have to be prepared to face cold reality with your own self-respect at the top of the priorities list. More brutally put, any woman you think you can't live without can never be trained to own her shit. It is the ultimate card, and if you are not willing to give her up, she will know it and play it. Outcome independence. Walk away. Always be able to walk away. Never let your woman think that she's become your life. That's unattractive anyway, dude. She's conquered you. She needs a man that's unconquerable by any woman. Or else what's the point? It's the same shit when you conquer sexually a woman really quickly. There was no work there. You gotta keep them working. Um, Nick, thanks for your advice. I will book a flight to Asia and see how life is there. I'm a software engineer so I can work remotely. Bro, what the f*** are you doing for the past few years? If you're already able to work remote with six figures... Travel to East Europe, travel to South South America, travel all over Asia. Just travel for the sake of traveling. Don't put any expectations on yourself. Go where pictures look nice, where beaches look amazing, where f food might be awesome. It doesn't matter. Go for the experience of meeting people and enjoying different cultures and see the lifestyle. All that other shit comes at the end, dude. Then you can look for a woman and think about a family and all that stuff. But find a place that keeps you happy, makes you peaceful inside. Then when you start looking for that other stuff, you're just going to be on a, such a whole different like energy that the the whatever you radiate is going to be seen by everybody, all the locals, and you just attract, magnet, people start magnetizing to you. But you're going to still, if you go to a place with the intent of a woman first, man, it's that needy energy. Everybody can see it. It rubs off on you right away. And then you're going to be looked at as essentially a mark. They're going to take advantage of you instead of, hey, this is the guy fell in love with the area, decided to move out here, work remotely, enjoys the food, enjoys the culture, and then women, men, everybody sees that in you and that that just exudes off of you and people want to be in your life. It makes the game easy. So here's what you do if your woman is childish and you want her to act like a grown-up. Step one, set the example by holding yourself to the same standards. For some men, this may mean easing up on themselves because men, as problem solvers, are more likely to blame themselves even for stuff they didn't do. Whatever the case, if you're wrong, admit it. Try to fix it. Don't be a hypocrite that values looking for fair treatment that you don't reciprocate. Step two, tell her clearly that you have a problem with her lack of accountability and that you want it addressed. No need to be a jerk, but there is a need to be unyielding. Remind yourself that this is what will make the difference between self-respect and eating shit sandwiches for the duration of a relationship. <laughs> and remind yourself that the choice is yours, not hers. Step three, call her on it every time. Be willing to withdraw if she tests your will. If you're planning to go to dinner, cancel it and go hang out with a friend. Or put on a dude bro movie like Terminator and order a pizza. Don't give in and don't do the work for her. Tell her what you need, her accountability, then withdraw into your own interest till she coughs it up. Step four. Mm, you guys better play that portion back again. You don't ever recommend bad or you don't uh, reinforce bad behavior. If you tell your woman you guys are going out at seven, eight, doesn't matter. She's not ready by said time. Oh, sorry, baby. It's going to be 15 minutes late, 20 minutes, 30 minutes late. Is that okay? Constantly does it one time, two times. Hey, life happens. I get it, dude. There's nuance in this. Sure. Had to get the kids, had to do some shit, had to make an emergency call, whatever. But if it's always, every single time you make plans, she's always late, then that's a pattern. That's when you start withdrawing attention. That's when you start basically focusing on yourself. She wants to do that later. Sorry. Hey, we had the reservation for seven. You're 30 minutes late. Later. I'm going to go hang out with the guys. Ted's building his deck. Going to go say hi to him and leave and walk away. Don't. She's going to scream. She's going to yell. She's going to do whatever to get your attention, to make a scene because she thinks she owns you. That's another reason why she's always late because she has no respect for your time because you don't respect your time because every time she's been late, you've never 
done anything about it. You never said anything. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. You're the, oh, it's okay guy. So you get walked all over. This is how it happens. Guys end up in these marriages and, okay, guy. Okay, honey. Okay. Yeah, let me ask the wife. Yeah, okay. Okay. Never f***ing said no for years. And they wonder how their shit went south. Or a reminder, be prepared to see her leave. If she would rather lose you than own her shit, help the pack her bags and then go put Arnold back on. Perfect. Remember, you get what you <laughs> tolerate in life. If you accept a relationship exactly. that does not value you, if you aren't willing to stand up for yourself, then don't complain about her. Perfect. Her shittiness is proportional to your lack of spine. Yeah, proportional to your lack of spine. She's a reflection of you, essentially. If you're getting treated like shit, if your woman doesn't respect you, if you're getting taken advantage of, if she's finessing you, what does that make you? She is the direct reflection of you as a man and the boundaries you have. If your woman is acting up, that's your fault. That's the truth nobody here wants to hear. They're going to say, Chameleon, I didn't know that in the beginning. She's changed. Nothing's changed. Your values as a man's changed. That's the truth. You started buckling on who you were from the get-go when you first met her. You softened up. You started putting her up on the pedestal. You f***ing fell in love and now you thought you could treat her nice. You thought wrong, bro. Finally, step five. Remind yourself every day, whether she leaves or not, that this stuff is important. Women talk all the time about losing themselves in relationships. That is usually what men do. They put all their eggs in one basket with a woman and then go to crazy, self-deprecating lengths to make sure the eggs don't break. Yep. Incidentally, those same men also kill themselves at many, many times the rate of women during the process of a divorce or breakup. And even if you don't suicide, it doesn't mean you escape misery and self-destruction. A life sentence with an emotional four-year-old only works if you are too emotionally stunted to require an available adult. Well, that brings us to the end of mm. another talk. Perfect. As always, links to the website, the book, Perfect. and the Patreon Perfect. are in the low bar. Perfect. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. And that is Paul Elam, an ear for men. There you go, guys. He's got a ton of amazing videos on his channel. Some accountability for men is needed in the sphere today because all I'm seeing is blame women this. It's all women's fault. They're all chameleons that. Damn, dating's terrible because of women. Because of women. Because, because, because. Like if you're a man and we're going to be on the self-improvement space and that we own our own destiny, how are you going to blame everything on somebody else? That shit is wild to me. That's never been a congruent idea. When we talk about women, we're talking about some women with some of their behaviors and laughing at them. And blaming them for their circumstances they get on TikTok to cry about. Yeah, women are not the enemy, dude. They're just as like powerless as the rest of the ones complaining against them. If you want to increase your chances of success, finding a good mate, all that other shit that comes along with it, it requires discipline and self-improvement. It requires you becoming more high value to get better value mates. That's all it is. It's, it's simple as that. There is a part of the society that has become delusional in a certain generation that they see the value of men as X, Y, and Z through social media. We talked about it plenty of times, but you can get a passport. You can go to where you are loved, where you are appreciated. You have the options. You have the ability. Time is on your side. Money is the great equalizer. You don't have to blame somebody else for your circumstances or your situation. That's not what a man does. That's what a weak does. Weak mother blame the world and everything in it for why their circumstances are what they are. Until you start asking questions, well, why'd you do this? Why didn't you do this? Did you see how that led to this? Did you see how you ended up in this exact position in life? Oh, beta. beta. All of a sudden, bro. I got family members like that. They blame daddy. They blame the neighborhood we grew up in. They blame society. They blame their friends. Blame every single thing. Beta. Beta bear. But themselves. Sounds like zero accountability. Still ended up being not shit.